Hi there. Now, before we start part B, just going to quickly remind you what we did in part A. We had the three particles, P, Q and R, of masses 2M, 3M and 4M. Q and R, remember, were at rest and P was projected towards Q with a speed of U. And then after the impact, we had to work out the speed of Q. We had to show that it was two-fifths, one plus E times U. Okay? And now we're told that after the collision between P and Q, there is a direct collision between Q and R. And given that the coefficient of friction E equals three quarters, we have to find now the speed of Q after this collision and the speed of R after this collision for six marks. So if you'd like to have a go at this, just give you a moment to pause the video. And when you come back, you can check your work solution against mine. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. Well, first of all, I'd want to draw a new diagram for the two particles Q and R. And it's going to look, hopefully, something like this with before impact and after impact. And I've labelled the speed of Q as being UQ and R was at rest initially. So what's going to happen after they hit? Well, let's just give them final velocities and we'll say that Q moves off to the right. OK, so we'll just put that in that direction and we'll call it a final velocity V and we'll put label it VQ. And the same applies to R. We'll label it with a V and label it as VR. Now, we know the initial velocity UQ here. It's going to be the same as this one. Two fifths, one plus E, all times U. But we're given that E is now three quarters. So we can actually get a better result for that. So let's start with that when E equals three quarters. When E equals three quarters, we can see that UQ must be equal to, and if we substitute three quarters in here, one plus three quarters is going to be seven quarters, times it with two fifths, and you end up with a total value of seven tenths. Seven tenths U, okay? So we've got that. Now that I've got our initial speed here, 7 tenths U, what I'm going to do is use the conservation of linear momentum and Newton's law of impact, generate two equations, and I should be able to then go on and solve for VQ and VR. So that's the method. I'll just take this out. We don't need that anymore. And uh, we'll just start by coming down here. So we'll look at the conservation of linear momentum first of all. So just write that briefly, conservation of linear momentum. And we need to set up a positive sense. I'm going to take positive to the right. Obviously, it doesn't matter which way you take it, but it seems to make sense anyway, because most of this, well, all of it is going to the right. So. What have we got? We've got the momentum of Q initially is going to be its mass, 3m, times its velocity, which is UQ, which is now 7 tenths U. So we'll just put that in as 7 tenths U. And then we've got no momentum initially for R. So this is going to be equal to the total momentum after impact. So starting with Q, we've got its mass, 3m times its velocity, which is VQ. And for the momentum of R, if we add its mass, 4M, times its velocity, which is VR. OK. Now I can see that each of the three terms has an M in it, so I'm going to cancel through by M, just to simplify it a bit. And let's tidy up our terms. OK, now what we've therefore got is 21 over 10 times U equals, we've got 3VQ 
and we've got plus 4 times vr. Now I know I'm going to need simultaneous equations, so I'm just going to hold back from this one, okay, and turn my attention now to Newton's law of impact. So we'll just come up through here, and uh, what have we got? Let's just put an intro here, Newton's law of impact. Newton's law of impact. So for this one, remember your coefficient of restitution, E, which we now know is 3 quarters, let's just put that in, 3 quarters is equal to the relative speed of separation divided by the relative speed of approach. Now VR is greater than VQ, so the relative speed of separation is going to be VR minus VQ and this is divided by the relative speed of approach, which is just going to be uq. So uq then is 7 tenths of u, so we'll just put 7 tenths there u. And what I'm going to do next is multiply through by 7 tenths u, just to get rid of this fraction here. So therefore, we're going to have vr minus vq, vr minus vq equals 3 quarters times 7 tenths u. So that's going to be, well, 7 threes are 21 over 4 tens of 40, 21 fortieths u. So now I've got an idea where I'm going with these simultaneous equations, this one here and this one here. I'm going to divide through by 4 so that I just get VR as the subject. It's up to you what you do here to solve simultaneous equations, but uh, yeah, I'm going to divide through by 4. Dividing by 4 gives me 21 fortieths u here, 21 fortieths of u equals 3 quarters these are going to be horrible fractions, but uh, whatever. 3 quarters VQ, divide this one by 4, and that just gives me VR. So I'm going to number this equation 1, and we'll have this equation as 2. We'll border this off. Okay, it's going to be a bit of a tight squeeze by the looks of it. Okay, and uh, what I'm going to do is equation 1 minus equation 2, and that will get rid of VR. Okay, so we'll just put a note here, equation 1 minus equation 2. If we do that, we have got 3 quarters VQ minus minus a VQ, so that's going to be 3 quarters VQ plus another VQ, 7 quarters then VQ, 7 quarters VQ. And then we've got VR minus that VR, so that takes that out. That was the reason for doing one take away two. And now we've got 21 fortieths U minus another 21 fortieths U. So that's going to be zero. So that means that VQ must be equal to zero. Okay, so therefore VQ equals zero. Now that we've got that, we could sub this into, say, equation two. So if we just say sub in 2, then that's going to give us VR directly. VR will be equal to 21 fortieths U. Okay, so therefore VR equals 21 fortieths U. And there's our two speeds of Q and R after the collision. Okay.